Well guys, here we are. It's uh, just gone seven o'clock. We're back down here. Can't wait to get started. <laughs> I've been waiting for this for a very long time. I'm gonna get my kit set up quickly and uh, get the rods in the water and then uh, we're back to you for a chat. That's great. The uh, the rods are in the water. We're fishing. Brilliant. Been waiting for this <laughs> for three months. Beautiful evening. Really, really hot. Um, just to put you in the picture, it's actually Tuesday, the twentieth. Now, I was intending, as you'll know if you saw my previous videos, I was intending on coming down Friday. Uh, one thing and another. Um, unfortunately, I just didn't get out. Uh, couldn't make it out Saturday either or Sunday. Yesterday I had an hour spare, uh, which is not really long enough to come down here. So uh, me and Anastasia just went down to the lock with the float rods, um, caught a few rudd, uh, which is a bit of fun. Uh, but tonight I've got uh, two or three hours spare. So I've come down here, uh, it's about 7.30 now. I'm gonna fish uh, into dark, uh, as long as I feel necessary really, to be honest. It um, depends, depends how it is. I'm gonna, get, gonna feel things along see what happens um, a lot of the time here you get plenty of indications on the tip when there's fish around and if that's happening I'll stay if it's like a morgue then I should probably knock on the head about 10 o'clock so we'll see how it goes anyway what I've done um, is I'm actually fishing with three rods uh, because I don't expect a lot of bites here not the way I'm fishing uh, which I'll run you through in a minute um, mainly fishing carp barbel, chub, uh, there's a few tension here as well but they don't go very big so I'm not massively keen on catching the tench but uh, anything to beat a blank will be fine. Uh, what I've done is uh, I've put two rods over here in the snag that I talked to you about when I was clearing out. Uh, if you've seen any of those videos you'll also notice that I didn't manage to get out this, <laughs> this snag here, um, this branch that has got stuck. Um, had a couple of goes at it. Um, and it's fairly well wedged in there. Uh, what I've done is I'll, I'll go at the weekend, I think, get some rope um, and chuck some, some kind of grapple over it and pull it out. I think that, that'll shift it. I mean, I have started to shift it, but I just couldn't get it out properly, just, just with a fishing rod. Um, some 30 pound braid, uh, just wasn't having it at all. So I've got uh, two rods here, as I say, only a couple of feet apart, that's all. Um, nailed rod right up against this snag a foot away as close as I dare cast I felt them both down they went down with a lovely dunk uh, it's fantastic um, I, I, I was really hoping it'd be nice and clear under there my past experiences have shown that it is but and it's still clear so that's great um, the other rod uh, the third rod I've actually cast down to a tree down there I showed you this again in the previous videos where I've had some lovely chub from 
um, on that rod I've put the 4G squid because I found that Chubb absolutely love that the Nash 4G squid um, what I've got left of it because I'm not making it anymore but uh, I should buy what I can um, these two rods I've got one on Pacific Tuna the CC Moore and I've got one on a Scopex squid wafter in here the wafter is just on its own 14 15 mil wafter um, and the the uh, Pacific tuna I've got fished. If you've seen it again, if you see my other videos, I'll show you it later. Um, the two boilies back to back with a paste wrap in the middle, which I find really good. It makes like a big pellet with a paste that uh, slowly dissolves in the middle of the between the two boilies. Um, as I said, I'll show you that uh, show you that later when I get the one of the rods into rebate. I'm also uh, it's worth mentioning I'm actually fishing um, the Mega Method feeders, which Again, you've seen previously with me, but I'll show you those later. What uh, what I've done, I've mixed up some um, method ground bait. I've gone away from the krill and tuna, which I usually use um, down the uh, still water, because I found that in here, in previous years, I found in here, you use krill and tuna ground bait in here, you just fill the swim up with pike. Um, so I don't want to do that. So <laughs> what I do is in the summer, I tend to move over to the coconut. Um, uh, method mix and I mix that up with the NV I think it's hemp and halibut or something like that anyway the NV is sort of greeny colour dark green uh, I mix that up together uh, put a few other bits and pieces some sort of up and down ground bait in as well um, which uh, gets the ground bait moving through the layers and hopefully it'll pull any fish up uh, from downstream and uh, just let them know there's some food around so cast don't know about every 20 minutes half an hour I'm not going to bang it in regularly I don't want to disturb any fish though I am at the end of the day I'm fishing for big fish and they're not stupid are they so I don't want to disturb the swim too much but maybe every half an hour something like that there's been bait going in here as I know because I've been putting it in there's been bait going in here for the last few weeks certainly every day for the last week and a half maybe two weeks uh, I have managed to sneak out the last few days um, down here and just keep the bait going in uh, so everything wasn't lost so um, we'll see how we get on anyway it's, uh, it's a bit of a waiting game down here uh, if you want to catch uh, six eight ounce roach on the stick float down here you you would be here all day catching them it's fantastic but uh, this type of fishing the type that I like to do um, it's a bit of a waiting game the fish are few and far between um, we've maximized our chances being here uh, as I said to you before in uh, previous videos again um, it's not breamy at all this stretch is very breamy but this particular few peg here not breamy so I'm not gonna get troubled by bream I don't want to be dragging a bream out of the peg every hour um, and disturbing the swim um, to be honest you know we'll, we'll look at some bream fishing I think later on in the season but for now I'm gonna concentrate on the barbel and carp and uh, hopefully some stonking great chub that live under that tree so uh, we'll see how it goes. Well guys, uh, while well, we're sitting and waiting, I'll just bring you through the gear. Uh, you may have seen it before, you may not. As you can see, I fish with three rods uh, purely because <laughs> fish are very few and far between in here that uh, I'm interested in catching. So it um, gives me a slightly better chance, I guess. <laughs> uh, I can spread things about or do use one rod to do slightly different things like I am tonight. Uh, fishing down there whereas the other two are over the the other side on in the snag the rods I'm using there uh, Fox Warrior uh, two and a quarter pound uh, 12 foot I think these are um, two and a quarter pound Tesco is ideal for this I do like a, a nice rod you can feel a fight I'm you know I'm not doing any distance casting or I don't need any any of these you know three and four pound Tesco of rods uh, this will control anything in this river um, and cast anything I need to cast so uh, fantastic got the Shimano uh, bait runners here as you can see um, I have got the bait runners on uh, but they are cranked up really tight um, I don't, know if, don't mind the fish taking a little bit of line um, but uh, obviously fishing pretty close to snags you don't want them taking much at all uh, I'm sitting right by the rods so I'll be on the rods in no time and you know, I'm only here for two or three hours, so concentration is not a problem either. I'm literally sat on the floor next to the rods, so I uh, should be on them straight away. Uh, but they are locked up tight as well. 
uh, if you look a bit further on down there uh, you'll be able to see that uh, I've got obviously some bite alarms on there uh, if you see my my videos from the um, the pool that I fish uh, I don't tend to use them very often um, which is why I haven't invested in uh, any particularly great make um, these do the job for me there's a sounder box if I on the very very rare perhaps once or twice a year I do a, an overnighter um, I've got a sounder box for in the in the bivy um, what I do like about these is the the um, they've each got an LED on them which uh, shows whether it's a run or a drop back uh, which does help at night and uh, just hope you know exactly what you're doing but as I said I don't use them a great deal um, but in this occasion when I'm fishing up against snags like I am you know it's good to know straight away uh, when you've got a when you've got a bite you can adjust the sensitivity like most alarms as well um, which is good in a river because uh, when the current picks up it's good to drop the sensitivity down but I've got them set fairly sensitively at the moment so I know the minute a fish even sniffs the bait um, and the indicators I use as you can see the Fox micro swingers which are, are fantastic for this kind of work as well uh, you can slide that weight up and down put as much or as little tension on the line as I want um, obviously I want as little as possible um, but you know we are fishing in flowing water so you know depending on the speed I need to adjust the weight and I can do so really easily with those um, you can see as well um, probably here I've got my rod tips uh, in a very unfashionably close to the water way um, the reason for this to be honest is even though it's the evening you do get the odd boat coming through uh, we had one about half an hour ago and by doing this and the fact that I'm fishing out there and it's probably 10 12 foot where I'm fishing um, near the other side I don't need to reel in um, boats will go over the top of the lines no problem at all these rods can stay where they are nice and low into the water don't need to reel in and I don't have to worry about back leads uh, don't need to mess about with back leads either um, never ever doing this I've never ever got caught on a boat um, never had any problems at all well as you can tell the uh, the lights just starting to fade uh, it's probably eight o'clock now um, we're inside the trees as well so uh, it's getting darker a bit quicker in here I mean this is really the time down here the sort of last hour of light first hour of dark down here tends to be the time to fish um, certainly for the big fish in here uh, they really do seem to be nocturnal um, catch very few barbel uh, in daylight hours down here they really really do seem to be uh, nocturnal I don't know if it's the boat traffic or, or exactly what it is um, but that's what I do find here so we're coming up to the to the time so <laughs> we, can, we can hope um, it hasn't been the best weather for it it's been absolutely scorching today as I say it's Tuesday the 20th I think uh, it was up in the 30s today uh, the low 30s and uh, been ridiculous you can probably see I'm still sweating now and it's like eight o'clock at night and sat here in my t-shirt I haven't bought any clothes with me I don't think I'll need them um, not really the weather for this place either um, the river's really clear I mean I can see probably a good three foot into it which is not good for this river um, for being productive it does tend to fish much much better uh, and the time to catch it is when the river just starts to rise after it's been like this that is the time you catch it right maybe 12 hours after it's rained hard the fish crawl up the rods um, it, it just makes it very very easy um, the rest of the time can be banging your head up the wall but you know I'm not going to catch your fish sat on the sofa am I so I'm here and uh, let's hope uh, we can break our river duck in our first session well, some slightly concerning news I had. Um, been chatting to a few people in the village, um, and uh, down at the lock, um, my wife goes down there with the kids and feeds the ducks quite often. And she was talking to somebody as well. And uh, my uh, worst fears were confirmed. Um, 
that uh, unfortunately there's an otter about. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw it last year. Um, it was dark, uh, but in the moonlight I'm sure I saw him going across the surface and duck down. You're not quite sure are you in a semi-light. And To be honest, I'm not a great fan of torches. I really don't use torches at all. Um, I've got a little head torch and I just use that for packing up and for baiting, that's it. Um, I'm not one of these people who shines a torch on the water to, to you know, spot where you're casting or anything. That's not me, I'm afraid. You know, it's, I'm sure it's all right on these commercial fisheries where the fish are used to people walking around the place with torches at night and stuff. But you know, these are wild fish in here. This really quiet stretch. You know, there's, there's nothing near the roads, 100 meters that way. We're right down behind a load of trees. The fish are used to it quiet. They're not used to having torches shown about the place, so I don't do it. Well, what would also go along with that is the fact that last year, when I say I sort of thought I saw that otter, um, a couple of occasions actually, um, the fishing was terrible. Now, we did have another long, hot summer. The river was low, clear, and as I say, it doesn't really fish like that. So, you know, that may have been contributing factor, but this otter, you know, down this little stretch, it, it could, you know, devastate the fish stocks. What really concerns me is, uh, what I was coming to say, was the, the otter has actually taken three cygnets um, from down by the lock. The, uh, we actually saw the two parents ones yesterday. One was covered in blood. Um, now, you know, it's all a bit hearsay and people say they saw the otter, they saw this, they saw that. Uh, oh, you know, I'm not, I don't have a problem with otters in, as such. Um, you know, you've got to live like everything else. Um, and so, you know, if there's one here, there's one here and that's that. Um, he's not got to move, has he? I've got to go and fish somewhere else. But um, I was very excited and very keen till I heard that um, in the last few days. And sort of my optimism has turned into hope rather than uh, than anything else. So w w we'll see. Um, you know, we might get a glimpse of him tonight. <laughs> you never know. Um, but we'll see. You know, we've seen carp up here, um, as you've seen in the... The, the previous videos, uh, saw that that huge koi. Uh, I've seen a couple more um, since that, uh, but uh, unfortunately didn't get it on on film. Um, saw a stonking great tench yesterday as well. Um, just uh, swimming up here when I came down baiting, just milling about in the side. I guess it was nice and warm, but you know we'll see. Right, while I'm recasting guys, I'll, uh, I'll just run you through what I'm doing. Um, my usual helicopter setup, but rather than LEDs this time, as I said, I'm using this Meliga method feeder. What I've had to do is convert these. Uh, normally they're fished in line. What I've done is just converted it um, to uh, run pendulum style, um, just so it will clip into the uh, bottom of my helicopter setup there. Uh, fluorocarbon hook link and as I mentioned my uh, Pacific tuna boilie split in half mounted back to back what I shall do with this is put a wrap of paste in the middle of it I've just got some Pacific tuna paste here and put that in the middle of the two boilies there if you can see that yeah, I've shown you this before um, but if you haven't seen it, so I'm fishing this particular rod, what I do is just gently mould that round to make what uh, basically ends up looking like a pellet. <laughs> um, as you can see, I'm not fishing particularly small baits, uh, fishing for barbel, chub, that have got huge mouths and carp that have also got huge mouths. Uh, not too worried about bait size, uh, certainly in the summer anyway. So there we go. Uh, got a size, uh, looks like about a size eight there, uh, with the uh, with the kicker on the bottom, just to make that hooking angle more aggressive. Um, got the blowback tubing on there, and uh, that's how my hook bait works. What I do with the these mega method feeders, just to leave a nice 
parcel next to the bait a bit of added attraction I tend to do is put uh, just a little skim of this method ground bit in there and in here I've got all my pots with my pellets in what I do is just drop a little packet of pellets in there cover it over drop that on top And there we go, all done. Well, here we go guys, as if to prove a point, as the boat come in, can leave the rods in the water. Bobbins may lift, it, lift a little bit, but apart from that, we're not gonna have an issue at all, as you'll see in a sec when they come through. It's the Countess of Eves from the uh, restaurant boat. Everyone having their dinner. <laughs> Well, there you go. I think we had one single bleep from uh, one of the rods. Not a problem at all. Get your tips down. It's not an issue. To be honest, boats don't get much bigger than that one on here. It's uh, about 40 people having a sit-down meal in there, so uh, that's the sort of size of that boat. They'll, uh, they'll just go down to the lock and turn around and they'll be back, probably about 20 minutes, half an hour. And to be honest, I tend to gauge that that's the time, <laughs> once they've come back, that the bites start. <laughs> Oh guys, we've got something.
well, I think, not surprisingly, it's uh, it's a chub, not a very big one either, but uh, it's a blank saver. <laughs> well, there we are. Fancied that uh, Pacific tuna paste wrapped boilies. You see, it hasn't been in that long. The uh, <laughs> the pellets are and the method mix is still on there. <laughs> well, let's have a look at him. <laughs> Beautiful little fella. Lovely condition. <laughs> so is that gob. <laughs> What's that? You gonna give me a pound for that? Not quite. <laughs> Doesn't matter, we're off the mark. It's not even dark yet. Fantastic. Let's get him back in the water. Well that's a great start. Not a massive one, but uh the rigs are working, the baits are working. Want one about six or seven times the uh, size of that one and I'll be happy. <laughs> but no, that, that's a really good start. I was getting no twitches at all on the rods. Absolutely nothing. Um, so it just shows, you know, uh, even if uh, it looks like nothing's gonna happen, you know, split second, something happens. Uh, strange bite as well. Um, you guys who, who fish uh, with boilies uh, in rivers will probably know this, uh, especially when you're hair rig stuff. That um, I'm sure the culprit's a chub, but you get lots and lots of bites where it just the bobbin shoots to the top, it like instantaneously bang, and then it's back down again, and it stops. Uh, and I'm sure it's chub picking it up and getting away with it. Um, I think it's Keith Arthur's, wasn't it? I used to. Be on tight lines and he always used to say that uh, hair rigging stuff for chub was a bad idea because they pick stuff up just in their lips and because you never catch them you never really know from here but i'm sure it's chub um, that are doing it and i wasn't sure if that had happened uh, then because we only had a few bleeps didn't we and then um he sort of stopped and the line was tight but i didn't want to wind in you know if i hadn't had a bite um sort of straight away so uh, that's why i left it a few few seconds but uh could tell and there was something on. Um, but he did manage to run me round the only lily that's out here. Um, and I had a bit of a game, to be honest, pulling him out and it was only a pound. So um, I definitely think I need to clear these last few lilies out. They've, uh, a few more have come to the top as well, so I need to get those out. So uh, job for another day. But, um, you know, we know now, so I should be a little bit more careful uh, as and when we get another bite. Okay, so they're gone, that's fantastic. What I should do is, uh, that'll be the last boat of the evening now, it always is, uh, it's gone nine o'clock. Um, it's regular every night they come up and down here, uh, about this time, so the evening, meal, cruise, down to the Ludington Lock, back up again. Uh, if they disappear off, sort of half a mile down there, mill about for a bit and then go back. So that's it for, for the night, and, unless there's some very strange <laughs> goings on, but. 99% of the time, that's it. So what we're gonna do is give it five minutes or so, just let the water settle, because they don't have to stir a lot of water. Um, we'll let it all settle down, give it, as I say, give it five minutes, and then what I should do is have all the rods in at the same time, rebate them all at the same time, get them all back out at the same time. So I disturb the swim once rather than three times separately. Um, and then that will be the last cast before it gets dark then um, and I shall sit it out for half an hour or an hour just on that cast um, and depending on what happens we'll stick it out a bit longer or uh, we'll go home. Well guys, uh, I don't know if this will come across on the camera but uh, it's uh, it's really starting to get dark now. The light's really going. It's uh, it's gone half nine now. I've made last cast with each of the rods. Uh, as the one 
down the, on the tree further downstream wasn't doing anything at all. I decided to put that over on the baited spot as well, so I've got all three rods over there. Um, it's really see for an hour, hour and a half, something like that, um, and see what happens. Uh, I'm not going to do any more recasting now. Uh, there's no point. We shall uh, we shall catch or we shall not. So uh, we'll see. But uh, as I say, the light's really going now. We're all set up. The anticipation is uh, is fantastic, but uh, we'll have to see whether anything materialises or not. As I was saying earlier, that's Mr. Chubb getting away with it. <laughs> Well guys, it's, uh, it's quarter past ten now, um, still a few remnants of light, uh, as you can see behind me the, uh, <laughs> the bite alarms are glowing, uh, it's probably going to be the last bit I can do to the camera um, before it gets properly dark, um, the rod tips are twitching, twitching away, there's obviously fish down there but uh, I haven't done any proper runs yet, um, I should give it probably another half an hour or so I think. I'm not going to do any more casting now, I don't want to disturb the swim. Um, that's why I keep my voice down as well. Um, so uh, I'll come back to you in half an hour or so, or, or a, a bit sooner if, uh, if we get a fish. Well guys, it's got a bit colder than they forecast it to. It's actually getting a bit chilly, it's quite nice actually. The last few days we've had to feel a bit cold, but uh, I do. Uh, I didn't think I'd bought any more clothes with me, but uh, fortunately I had a rummage through my bag fish top in there. I had a rummage through my bag and found a long sleeve t-shirt so uh, that'll keep me going I think for half an hour. I've got my trusty hat of course as well and uh, I could better get the old uh, get the old head torch on. Uh, it's getting too dark to see now so I'll get this on in case I need to land a fish. Hi guys, well unfortunately no more fish, no more bites, it all actually went very quiet once it got dark which is uh, unusual for here but uh, you know that's fishing isn't it, you never quite know what's going to happen. Um, we'll try again, we'll keep the bait going in here um, over the next few days, uh, we'll try again at the weekend, uh, we stay a bit longer at the weekend not having to get up for work. Um, so once again thanks for watching and uh, tight lines, enjoy your own fishing and uh, I'll see you again soon.